Hi everyone, my name is Dr Jilly Carr and I'm the Academic Director in Archaeology at the Institute of Continuing Education. And in this video I'm going to talk to you about field walking. When I've been going out on my daily walk every day during lockdown, I've been looking at the ground as I walk. You can always spot an archaeologist when you're on a walk because they will always just be looking at the ground and thinking about what can the stuff that we find on the surface of the ground tell you about what lies beneath the soil. We also have to think about does everything survive? The kind of things that we tend to find on the whole we find a lot of pottery sitting on the surface of the ground and very hard dense things like um, brick and tile and stuff like that and things that are more fragile don't survive very well especially organic things but I want to tell you about a particular walk that I made well it was uh, last week actually and it was on the edge of a potato field and uh, this is just on the edge of my village and there's a particular pathway that goes on the edge of the field and I collected some stuff to talk to you about and I think that you can see from these photographs why I chose this field because you can see all sorts of bits and pieces in the soil it really is a bit of an archaeologist's dream but when you go field walking there are actually proper ways to do it in fact there's two different methods one is walking in transects and that is where you might get your team of people spaced 10 meters apart on the edge of the field and you would all walk forwards and every uh, you pick up the things you find and every 10 meters you put stuff in in your little plastic bag and then you carry on walking and then you can um, get an idea of what what you found in the previous 10 meters or you can prefer a grid method, which, which I prefer, and that is you, you divide up your field into 10 by 10 meter grids and you, you walk methodically within your little 10 by 10 meters, picking up everything you find and you put them in your plastic bag and leave them in the center of that grid. And then at the end of the day, you, um, of course, you label your bags. You've got to uh, label them according to the grid. So maybe on one side of the field, it's line A, B, C, D, E. On the other side, it's one, two, three, four, five. So you would have bag A1, B2, C3, things like that. And what you do when you analyze what you find is you can see the, the density of the distribution of those objects. Well, let's have a look at the kind of things that I found on my walk. Now, the, the plough had fairly recently sort of churned up the soil, and um, so there were a lot of things on the surface for me to find. So here's an image of my little plastic bag that, you know, I wasn't doing proper field walking. I was simply walking on a path by the side of the field, but I wanted to pick up some objects just to give you a clue uh, about the kind of things that anyone can find when they go field walking. So when I'd found my objects, I, I got a, quite a nice full plastic bag and I took them home and I cleaned them. And here's some of the objects drying. And let's have a look at what I found. So uh, all sorts of goodies. There was quite a few animal bones and they were really speaking about, um, I think, the joints of meat, basically, that were being eaten. In I mean, I, I didn't know and I don't know what the site was by the field that I was walking by. I don't know what was once on that site. So the kind of objects that you find can begin to give you a clue. So let's see if we can piece together any of the information that is found from the objects, see if we can begin to say something about this site. Now I just wanted to show you while I was looking at these bones is that archaeologists will look for butchery marks where bits of meat have been taken off the carcass of an animal and um, in this photo you can see some of the knife marks, some of the butchery marks still on these bones. I also found bits of salt glazed drainage pipe and you can tell that because it is very thick and chunky, it's got a, a curvature to it. You can see from the glaze that, um, you know, they tend to, it tends to have quite a distinctive glaze that's easily spottable. Um, I also found some, some sheep's teeth and you know for me that really sort of begins to say okay well this is obviously farmland that you've got grazing animals and you know when their teeth come out they enter the archaeological record i found bits of brick and roof tile 
building debris basically i mean you know we're not talking about finding gold coins and amazing things when you go field walking if you're really really lucky you might find that but just in terms of your your casual um daily experience of doing it you're not necessarily going to find real treasure but you know archaeologists have a different idea about what is treasure compared to other people it doesn't have to be gold to be treasure for an archaeologist so yes i found bits of building debris i found bits of domestic pottery some as such as um these bits of blue and white pottery so although we've got we've got five bits in this picture um, maybe it came from five different vessels it can be hard when you've only got a, a fragment of pottery to to be able to tell whether it came from two different parts of a plate or the same vessel because obviously the pattern can vary uh, over a vessel but we also you know we want to date our bits of pottery to help us date the site um, this can be really difficult. I mean, I don't know about you, but in my cupboards, I have inherited pottery. In fact, some of the side plates I use every day belong to my grandmother, and she inherited it, I think, from her grandmother. Uh, and in fact, it has a stamp on the back saying 1880. So let me tell you, this is a miracle that any China has survived this long in my family, where we're very accident prone, the women in my family. Anyway, um, you know, what I'm saying is that we all have inherited heirloom uh, bits of things in our in our family, and so if you think of that entering the archaeological record, you can't necessarily the date, the period of the manufacture of those bits of pottery, but you can sort of say when they were being used, perhaps. There was also some very distinctive domestic pottery, or perhaps bits of tile that I found, as can be seen in this picture. This sort of orange design is very distinctive and so if i wanted to find out what vessel that came from i would have to match it but i mean um this is very distinctive i, I don't know what you think i think this could be sort of maybe 70s or earlier maybe 50s um you know this really isn't my um my period when it comes to identifying pottery archaeologists i guess are used to dealing with things much older anyway there was a, a range of bits of glass as you can see that i found there was green glass brown white and blue and so we're perhaps getting a reflection of domestic use here wine beer milk perhaps also the blue could have been a bit of medicine bottle it, it definitely seems to be a domestic um reflection that we're, we're getting here we're seeing an insight into a sort of domestic use there were also these three metal objects i just wanted to talk to you about well the item on the right is a, a nail um quite an old-fashioned sort of nail the thing in the middle that looks like a horseshoe is actually a metal plate for a human shoe and the item on the left, well, your guess is as good as mine, but I put this image online and asked people to, uh, on, a, on a website uh, for archaeologists, a Facebook group for archaeologists, and, and somebody said that it was um, like a little kosh that you would use to hit a fish with after you had got it out of the water just to knock it out. Well, maybe, maybe not, who knows. But we also found bits of clay pipe and i love clay pipe because you can it is very useful for dating um you can see in this picture you can see bits of the bowl of the clay pipe and a little bit of stem and clay pipes traditionally could be very long indeed they could have a very long stem and you these are quite useful for dating because the very old clay pipes um, in use at a time when tobacco was quite expensive and not so um, ubiquitous the the very old ones have a very small bowl and the stem has a very thin hole in it for smoking so you get through your your small amount of tobacco quite slowly whereas the more recent ones um, have big bowls and quite a, a thick hole in the middle so you could kind of burn through the tobacco quite quickly but it wouldn't matter because it was cheap and easily available and you can see the example we've got here is quite a, a relatively big bowl so let's let's summarize here what do these finds tell us well it seems to me that we have the debris of a domestic site perhaps a farm dating to sort of the 19th 20th century um, but I wonder whether this was redeposited rubbish because one of the ways in which you can find out more about what your land was used for is you can do map regression. You can look at old maps 
and uh, I had a look at Google Earth, which lets you look back at old wartime aerial photographs uh, on some parts of the country, and it showed that there was no use of that land, there was no houses on it in the 1940s. So perhaps if that land was used for um, domestic dwellings, it was before the Second World War, um, but perhaps it was just the rubbish of uh, a, a building that was once nearby and they just sort of shoved the rubbish in the field. We don't know. Um, another way of finding out more about this site would be to excavate. Um, and perhaps another way would be to sign up for the certificate in the Archaeology of Ancient Britain in the Autumn. Now, the, uh, the Institute of Continuing Education runs many archaeology courses, but this particular certificate I mentioned has a module called Introduction to Archaeology. And that seems to me a very good place to go if you want to begin to learn more about how to understand the landscape around you, how to understand the archaeology in the fields around you, and how to find out how to go about doing your own research as well. So I hope this gives you an idea about what to look out for when you're next on a walk in your local countryside.